Hey there fellow Commander players, welcome back to my channel. It's time for a thrilling episode of Budget Power Ups, a series about getting the most out of our Commander decks without breaking the bank. From explosive ramp spells and game changing win conditions, to clever combos and synergistic creature packages, we'll be exploring it all. My mission? To show you that you can compete with the best without maxing out your credit cards. So, be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to keep updated for more of my future Commander content. Before we start, I'd like to quickly mention my friends at Paramount Designs. They make amazing playmats with great artwork. If you are interested in picking up one of these awesome playmats, check out the link in my description below, which is offering a special discount code for my YouTube viewers. Okie dokie, without further ado, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Let's dive into these power-ups. Number one, Artifact Mutation. An instant spell that costs one green and one red mana to cast. It says the following. Destroy target artifact. It can't be regenerated. Create X11 green sapling creature tokens where X is that artifact's mana value. This is a very cool spell. Artifact removal would always be relevant in Commander, yeah? I mean, think about how many artifact staples exist out there. Every game of Commander you play has an artifact spell cast within it. This spell costs 2 mana at instant speed, which overall is solid. But the real spice here lies later on in the card text, where it states, create X11 green sapling creature tokens where X is that artifact's mana value. Now this is sweet, very sweet. The larger the artifact CMC, the more reward for us to plunder. This card feels relevant throughout all stages of the game, and having cards like this in your hand is always a nice feeling. A definite power up worth picking up, especially for those ghoul lovers out there. You can buy this card for around 70 cents. Number 2. Cold Steel Heart. A snow artifact spell that costs 2 generic mana to cast and says the following. Cold Steel Heart enters the battlefield tapped. As Cold Steel Heart enters the battlefield, choose a colour. For tap, add 1 mana of the chosen colour. So, Cold Steel Heart allows you to tap for any colour of mana, which is valuable in the format like Commander, where you often need access to multiple colours of mana to cast your spells. Remember though, it's the mana you chose, yeah? So if you choose blue, it'll only tap, uh, tap for blue. This artifact is an excellent mana fixer, especially when you're missing that one specific colour. How many times have you played a game of Commander and you've been one certain colour away from popping off like crazy? Loads, right? I know I have. Cold Steel Heart can help fix this issue. It can help fix your mana base and ensure you can cast your spells, even if you're playing a multicolored or color intensive deck. It only costs 2 total mana to cast, making it an early game all star, offering great versatile mana ramp. An awesome card, with the only downside being that it comes in tapped, but that's fine for casual formats. You can buy this card for around 95 cents. Number 3. Regrowth. A saucy spell that costs 1 green and 1 generic mana to cast, it says the following. Return target card from your graveyard to your hand. Are there any graveyard recursion lovers out there? If so, then you know how great this card is. Being able to bring back any card we want from our graveyard back to our hand is actually, perhaps surprisingly, a very powerful ability, especially when it only costs us 2 total mana to do. You can use this card to bring back a combo piece or a powerful creature that causes havoc when it's on the battlefield. You can even use it to bring back your favourite mana rocks. It's all up to you really. This is a great upgrade and so worth picking up if you don't have one. You can buy this card for around 70 cents. Number 4. Storm Surge Kraken. A Kraken creature that costs 2 blue and 3 generic mana to cast. It has 5 power and 5 toughness and says the following. Hexproof. Lieutenant. As long as you control your commander, Storm Surge Kraken gets plus 2 plus 2 and has whenever Storm Surge Kraken becomes blocked, you may draw 2 cards. Are you a fan of drawing cards? Well, this lovely Kraken could be the upgrade you're looking for. The only requirement for it to work to its full potential is that you have to be controlling your commander, which is very easily achieved. When you do control your commander, Storm Surge Kraken becomes a 7-7, which is a hefty number for your opponent to swallow if he connects with their life totals. You can really mess with people's heads with this card, as they try to decide whether to block and you draw, or do they take the 7 damage to the face. 
both nasty predicaments for your opponent to choose from. Oh, and let's not forget about that hexproof, making our Kraken a hard creature to remove. An overall great card that's a lot of fun to play. And it's a Kraken, so you could put him into a Kraken tribal deck. Lots of fun, lots and lots of fun. You can buy this card for around $1. Number five, Talisman of Dominance. An artifact spell that costs two generic mana to cast and says the following. For tap, add one generic mana, or for tap, add one blue or one black mana. Talisman of Dominance deals one damage to you. So, Talisman of Dominance is an efficient mana rock that provides ramp, allowing players to increase their mana production early in the game. This helps in casting bigger spells earlier and gaining resources advantages over opponents. It's a versatile mana rock, offering either one generic mana at no life cost or one blue or black mana for one life, which is amazing. And the one life loss is a small amount to pay in Commander, which we all know is a 40 starting life game. This mana rock rocks. <laughs> you get the pun? Anyway, yeah. it only costs two generic mana and it even comes in untapped, ready to go. If you don't have this card, then pick one up now. It's truly excellent in both casual and competitive games. Well, in my opinion, anyway. You can buy this card for around 80 cents. Number six, Thunderfoot Balaf. A creature beast that costs two green and four generic mana to cast. It says the following. Trample, Lieutenant, as long as you control your commander, Thunderfoot Balaf gets plus two, plus two, and other creatures you control get plus two, plus two, and have Trample. Thunderfoot Ballad provides a significant power boost to all your creatures as long as you control it and your commander. Its ability grants trample and plus two plus two to all creatures you control which make your entire army more threatening during combat and perhaps even give you the extra boost of power you need to remove players from the game, making Thunderfoot Ballad a possible win condition. The trample ability granted by Thunderfoot Ballad helps bypass and overcome blockers. This is especially useful in multiplayer games where there are more often times where multiple blockers are there to battle with. An overall awesome card that can definitely help you pick up a win. And you can buy this card for around 60 cents. Number seven, Victimize. A sorcery spell that costs one black and two generic mana to cast. It says the following. Choose two target creature cards in your graveyard, sacrifice a creature, if you do, return the chosen cards to the battlefield tapped. Okay, this is a very cool card. For free total mana, you can sacrifice something small on your board or something you don't really need anymore to bring back two creatures from your graveyard straight to the battlefield. The only downside being is that they come in tapped. This card is excellent recursion. Getting two bodies for one is always good and the fact you can even pick any creature in your graveyard makes this even better. This is an excellent addition to any decks that mill themselves, you know, surveil, or just love bringing creatures back from the dead. An excellent power up to pick up indeed, and you can buy this card for around $1. Number eight, Court of Ire. An enchantment card that costs two red and three generic mana to cast. It says the following. When Court of Ire enters the battlefield, you become the Monarch. At the beginning of your upkeep, Court of Ire deals 2 damage to any target. If you're the Monarch, it deals 7 damage instead. Okay, I'm a big fan of burn effects in Magic, and Court of Ire is a slam dunk. It does its job, and it does it very well. I'm also a big fan of the Monarch mechanic, and feel like it's one of the most fun mechanics to bring to a game of Commander. Everyone loves it, and when Monarch is introduced to a game, it makes games way more interactive and interesting. But the card does more, and it's incredible. Two damage at any target at our upkeep isn't bad, yeah? But when we are the Monarch, this pumps up to seven. <laughs> seven damage to a player or permanent on each of our upkeeps. That's just crazy. This enchantment could be the card that finally ends the game for you, offering that extra bit of burn to remove players from the game. Because often with burn decks, well, for me anyway, I find that I can bring people's life totals down fast, but I get to a point where they suddenly start to stop what I'm doing, and they've got like 10 life, sometimes sometimes 8, 7 life. So a card like Quarter Pile can definitely help finish them off. It's an overall fantastic card and very enjoyable to play. You can buy this card for around 50 cents. 
Number nine, Primal Command. A sorcery spell that costs two green and three generic command to cast. It says the following. Choose two. Target player gains seven life or put target non-creature permanent on top of its library, owner's library, or target player shuffles their graveyard into their library, or the final one, search your library for a creature card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle. Okay, this card costs a hefty five mana, but we get to choose two options from a nice selection of four, which makes it a great card in my opinion. In fact, I think three out of the four options are fantastic. I don't see the seven life option being that relevant, unless you are super low on life or you use it in a political way to help another player out who is low on life. Uh, mainly because we start with 40 life, yeah? So we likely won't be using this one too much. The other three options are superb though. We can bounce a permit to the top of a library, shut down graveyard recursion decks, or search our library for a creature card. You can't really go run running this. And let's remember, it's green, yeah? So the five mana, which is quite a hefty number, can be relatively easily achieved when you combine it with mana dorks and mana ramp and all that stuff that green offers. An overall sweet card that's worth trying out, a nice power up for sure. And you can buy this card for around one dollar. Number 10, the final card on my list, the final power up. Wizards of Fae, a human wizard creature that costs one blue and three generic mana to cast. It has free power and free toughness and says the following. Myriad, whenever this creature attacks, for each opponent other than defending player, you may create a token that's a copy of this creature that's tapped and attacking that player or planeswalker they control. Exile the tokens at the end of combat. Instant sorcery spells you cast cost one generic mana less to cast. You may cast sorcery spells as though they had flash. So, this wizard creature is wonderful, and being a wizard means it can fit in many, many wizard tribal decks out there. We get to reduce our casting cost of instant sorcery spells, and even have the ability to give our sorcery spells flash, effectively turning them into instant spells. I love this card, I think it's fantastic. If you can find ways to clone it as well, you can then quite easily, very quickly, um, reduce your, your instant sorcery spells massively. I mean, imagine having two of these on the board, you're reducing them by two. You get three, you're reducing it by three, and so forward. It's an awesome, awesome card, definitely worth playing with, and that mirror ability is really interesting to play with. Attack with all your stuff, and then find a way to cast your um, sorcery spells at instant spe speed as well, because you've got to do all this before the, um, before the combat step ends. But yes, an excellent card indeed. And you can buy this card for around $1.50. Okay, everyone, we have come to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for making it this far. If you did enjoy the video, please drop a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I would really like to know if you have any recommendations on budget power-ups for Commander. If you do, please share it in the comment section below. I love reading your comments and always try my best to answer them all. Which is your favorite power-up in this video? Let me know. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, take care and goodbye.